Well, over the past six months, property prices have been rising and Sydney has taken home the title of the second most unaffordable city for housing in the world. Wow. To assist, the federal government has recently launched its Help to Buy scheme, but with most states offering their own Help to Buy schemes, how do you choose? Well, we're joined by Today Money expert Effie Zahos to break it all down for us. Effie, where do we start here? Good morning, yeah. It, it, and there is a big confusion here. Do I go federal? Do I go state? Yeah. Do I choose this option, that option? I guess it comes down to what is the issue for you. So as you say, property prices are continuing to climb. So mm. take a look at the latest data from CoreLogic on what an average price dwelling is. So it's a home or unit. You need about 733000 You then need a 20% deposit, which is equivalent to 147000 to avoid that costly lender's mortgage insurance that you have to pay the bank. Under current average interest rates, that's what your repayments would be. So if your issue is that you can't get this deposit together, that 147000 then maybe consider the home guarantee scheme. That's where you go in for as little as 2 or 5% and it avoids lenders mortgage insurance. If your issue is a deposit and your repayment, so I can't get 147000 and I can't afford 4000 then you're in that shared equity space that you need to look at. OK, help to buy scheme. Talk us through it. So that's the federal one that the government's launched that you talked about. It's due to come out next year, around mid next year. So the idea here is basically the government goes in with you. So you put a 2% deposit, the government puts in either 30 or 40%, depending if it's a new home or an existing home, and then you get a bank load for the rest. Now, it's for low-income earners. At this stage, it's 90000 or 120000 if you're a couple. There are price caps as well. So to give you an example, in Adelaide, the price cap is 600000 Now, CoreLogic data says there's only about 19% of the suburbs that are under that mm. threshold. But I think by the time this rolls out next year, that those thresholds can change and they'll move those around. But the government puts in 30 or 40, but you've yeah. got to pay the government back yeah. at what interest rate? Okay, no, there's no interest rate. So they basically, like, like it's us two buying a place together, you're the government, the I'm the... Yeah, the, the profit, we share the profit. So if they put 30% in at the end of the day, they take on the profit or loss as and well. And can you take the government out of that eventually? Or yeah, not? you can. You can buy them out when you're ready. The other thing to note, that if your income goes up over 90000 let's say you're single and you jumped in, and then next year you get a pay rise, if you have two consecutive years where your income's over that threshold, they'll kick you out of the scheme. Mm. Oh. So you've got to read the fine print with all of these. And look, the thing is, there are state ones as well. They all differ. So for example, that one in Queensland is called Pathways. It's only for government properties. New South Wales is probably the closest one I've found that mimics the federal one. But the idea here is that you do check the terms and conditions on what they are. But there's quite a few shared equity schemes at a state level. Fascinating stuff, mm. Effie. Always fascinating myself. Watch the small print. <laughs> <laughs> Always is. That's it. It's 8 8 Hey there, Today fans, Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God. Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our <laughs> YouTube channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?